Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Terra Farmercraft. So today is going to be a bit of a hodgepodge, I guess you'd call it. Um, there's a bunch of little odds and ends that of uh, things in Terra Farmercraft that I don't use very often. And uh, so if I just play normally, you probably would never see them. So I figured I might show you a bunch of that stuff. Um, first thing is, I don't recall... I don't think the apples were uh, in harvestable shape on our last episode. I forgot to go check. But in any case, we have some apples now. Still no olives. We'll see. I seem to recall someone telling me that the olives come in in October. So we'll we'll see. Well, we do have ourselves some apples here at any rate. Okay. Whee! All right, now I should have some cloth around here somewhere, don't I? Paper, cloth, there we go. And I have some sticks. Okay, so one thing is, uh, in regular Minecraft, you have paintings that you can hang up on the wall. Well, you can have paintings in Terra Firmacraft too. Do, do, do. You just take a piece of Terra Firmacraft cloth and you surround it in sticks. And there's your painting. Now, I don't really want to use up any... Well, maybe I could use this here. Okay, yeah, actually, maybe I could put it up here. No. No. Give me one that's too wide. Are there any that are too wide? Or oh, there was one that was too tall. Ah, there we go. Oh, a creeper face. That's perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Hi, creeper. What is it that uh, General Spaz, that's what uh, that's what Ethos a creeper is, right? Okay, so that, that's one little thing you can do. Uh, another one is if you take two pieces of wool cloth and put them side by side, that's how you get carpeting. So let's come out here. And we can uh, lay down a bit of a welcome mat for folks. Well, I guess I should actually you know, take a moment to admire it. Pretty. I believe you can dye. Can you dye? I think, I'm pretty sure you can dye cloth, can't you? I have some lapis here. And I believe you come over here and grind the lapis up. Ooh, I almost, I almost need a new handstone. Okay. I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here. I've never played around with trying to die anything. Eh, no, looks like not. It's kind of weird. But anyway. But yeah. So, oh, this is some jet I picked up. Uh, jet is basically, it's sort of like coal, except you can't burn it in the game. You should be able to, but you can't. So, um... Jet just serves as another kind of gem in here. So here, let's put in the gem chest. So I'll have to look into how you do dyes and stuff in TFC. I don't actually recall that. So we can get into that some other time. Put a cloth back. So that's a cloth stuff. And for the next thing, we're going to want our saw and some logs. Oh, yeah, let's use the white elm up. <clears throat> okay, now the other thing you can make are uh, support timbers. Whoops, that's not what I meant. I wanted two of them. Uh, saw above. There we go. So you can make these support beams. So two logs side by side with saw above gives you um, horizontal. You see there's the H at the front. That's a horizontal support beam. Get eight of those. And then I think if you put them... Okay, if you put two on top, two logs on top of each other with saw beside, this is so that it can fit in a uh, two by, so they can fit in your normal two by two crafting grid. You don't need a uh, a uh, workbench for it. And it's like gives you vertical support beams. So, what is the point of these things? Let's just make up, free up some room here. Uh, do I have? Do, do, do. Oh, my sand's probably over here. Oh, 
Oh, did I turn all of my sand? Did I really turn all of my sand into... Uh... Oh, it doesn't matter, I can use dirt. I must have turned all my sand into glass. Okay. So, as you know... As you know, Frank... If we try to build dirt up like this... It will fall down. And if I put one here, it'll... Well, in fact, several of them will fall down. So let's try something a little bit different now. Let's put up a support beam. Doesn't fall down. Still falls down. Okay. I put up another support beam. Uh, put a vertical one. I think that should do it. Put a piece of dirt up here. There. Oh! I missed where I was trying to get, but it shows the point. You see? The dirt does not fall down. I think I can go three or four. Four. And then it falls down. So these vertical and horizontal support beams, um, they will hold up things that would otherwise, you know, blocks that would otherwise would fall. Yeah. Just trying to put it up there. Well, that's interesting. Why does it keep popping out? I don't know. Don't know. So I can, like, put up a hole. I can put up a dirt roof this way if I really wanted to. So early on in the game... You know, rather than building that, you could, in fact, build yourself a dirt hut by uh, building these support beams. Oh, no, 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 you need a saw. Duh, forget that. I keep forgetting you need advanced tools to do some of this stuff. I better leave that in there. So that's pretty cool. Now, the original, the main intent of them uh, was to prevent cave-ins underground. So you'd mine out a bit of an area, stick up some support beams, and that would secure the area for, you know, four around. So you'd mine that out and then stick up another support beam. But I just find that too tedious, and cave-ins are rare enough that I just put up with cave-ins. This, yeah, I just keep going till they happen. Well, I guess I could use a shovel for this, isn't it? I? Shovels are kind of intended for digging dirt. Okay, so that's support beams. Now where I do find support beams are a little more useful is actually as kind of a... they kind of look neat decoratively. Let's see if I can do some here. Uh, I don't know if I have any room in... oh, I all have room in the... Uh, in the uh, brew house. So you can do stuff like say, well, you know, it's like I want to put Whoops. Uh, actually, there isn't much room here. Okay, let's do it outside. Is if you want to sort of emulate a post and beam style construction, for example. Then you can have that as your, you can put that up as your framing, for example. And then you can throw other blocks or you can plank it up on the sides and stuff like that. And then, and it'll give kind of a nice rustic look to it. Gives it kind of a very, very firm look, you know, especially if you're building a wooden place. So, so that's something to keep in mind for you builders out there. They're always looking for new blocks to play with. And if you don't like, if you really are afraid of cave-ins, then... You know, you can go to all the trouble to put them up. So. Alright, let's dump these. Don't need them. Don't need the dirt. Don't think I need the saw anymore either. Okay, what is next on our hit parade here? Oh, bricks. Bricks, okay. So, rock salt, no. Andesite, maybe. Basalt. Hmm. Actually, I'd like to do it in chert, but I don't have enough chert, so we'll do it with basalt. Okay, so we pick up tons and tons and tons of these rocks in uh, in TFC. And so what the heck can you do with them? Um, 
Well, uh, so we know that we can uh, take two of them together in our hand and, uh, you know, and bring up the napping interface to, you know, craft tool heads out of them if we want. That's one thing we can do with them. What else can we do? Well, if we put four of them together, that'll give us a cobblestone block, but it's not like we need a lot of those either. But the other thing you can do with them is if you put, if you use a chisel with them in your crafting area, you can make a brick out of them. So let's make a few more bricks. Okay. And as you see, oh, the bricks don't do you much good. If even if I had a ninth one, it wouldn't it wouldn't do me any good. So what good are the bricks? Well, let's go and grab ourselves a bucket of water. And oh, well, my flux is over here. Uh, let's grab ourselves some flux and our bricks. And I think the pattern is like oh, whoops! I have to make the mortar first. And the mortar is, I believe. Oh, I need sand. Oh, crap, and I just determined that I don't have any sand. No, I have no sand. All right, I'm uh, I'm going to uh, cut out for a moment here and go find myself some sand, and then I'll be... Oh, wait a minute. Slate, do I really have no sand? At... Oh, there's sand. Ta-da! Ah, the show can go on. Excellent. Okay. Sand. So I think it's like this. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, so sand and flux and water, uh, bucket of water, you only need obviously one in for each of these. Uh, that'll give you 16 mortar. Now the other thing you can do is you can pre-mix the flux in to make lime water and then lime water and sand will also give you the mortar. So that's one way of doing it without needing a crafting table, for example, or just to get one step. Well, yeah, I guess basically it just helps you get rid of a one step uh, or get rid of the need for a crafting table. But anyway, so that gives you 16 mortar. And once you have the mortar, I believe the pattern is like this. Yeah, there we go. And that gives you brick blocks. Whoops, let's put them down here. Pretty, pretty brick blocks. Which again, you can use for, uh, you can use for building. Uh, the other thing you can do is Let's see here. Uh, how's it go? It goes like this. Do I have enough left? Oh, I have just enough left. If you do this pattern, it gives you a brick wall. Which can then go like that. Oh good, you can't jump over it. I was hoping that'd be the case because of what I'm planning on, what I'm thinking of doing um, is I'd like to put a wall around my compound. You know, won't a wall like that won't protect it against spiders, but it'll protect it against pretty much every other kind of mob. And, uh, you know, I do have the spawn protection, so, you know, I don't get that many mobs anyway. But, you know, every if I'm, when I'm working outside, every now and then a, uh, a zombie or a, a creeper or something will... Or, wander or skeletons are the worst well creepers are the worst actually they'll wander in from afar Ooh, don't want to look at him so it'd be nice to i don't know somewhere out around there just build a nice fence at a nice distance out so that i can just work in here without being bothered by them and if a couple spires show up that doesn't bother me so much so there were a couple of different fence designs i was looking at but i kind of liked the idea of using these uh stone brick fences now the other thing was or the wall, wall rather, not fence. Now the other thing I was wondering about, what do they look like when you put them on top? Mm, okay, but I, since they're since they're already more than a block high, 
I guess I'll just use the bricks or use the uh, just use the walls by themselves, I guess. So that's a project I have. Maybe you know, I'll record me spending, you know, six hours doing nothing but building walls and then make you guys watch every second of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, as if I can force you to do anything. Okay, what else was it we wanted to do? I showed you the sport beams, the walls, part. Um, oh, that's the other thing that I've talked about. Um, okay. Um, I've talked a couple times about making gunpowder. So for that, I need uh, sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. Well, obviously we have the charcoal, we've been making it. Um, in my mining around underground, I've detected saltpeter. I haven't bothered to go off and find any. Or at least I don't think I've picked up any in my travels, have I? No. Um, but I have detected some, so some down there. What I'm still missing is sulfur. And so that's why when uh, we were doing the spelunking in the last episode, I was kind of hoping to run into uh, a little underground uh, lava pool uh, because that's where you find the sulfur. But alas, I didn't. So I was still looking for some sulfur. But another alternative, of course, would be to go would be to get the gunpowder from creepers. So far, I've collected all of four. Um, but it would take a lot. I would need a lot of gunpowder to do. There's basically only one thing you can do with gunpowder in the game, and that's create a powder keg. And it takes, uh, hang on a second while I check. Yeah, it takes a whopping 256 gunpowder to just make one powder keg. Uh, so that's like, I think, eight stacks of 32. So you can see my little four here just isn't going to cut it. No, not at all. So... Um, what I was thinking of doing was trying to build a mob farm. Yeah, you know, and that would also give me a nice supply of arrows. I mean, I have the chickens, and so I can make my own, but at least then I don't have to spend a lot of time digging, uh, digging gravel to farm for, uh, flint. I can just get them directly off. Oh, here comes a, here comes a little zomboid. Oh, and another one. Oh, the gang's all moving. See what I mean is even though I have the protection area around me, they eventually find their way over. That's most of the way through the night, but they eventually get over here. Um, so if I want to build a mob farm, there are a couple of special considerations. So one of which is, whoops. See, remember this guy up here? Yeah, our spawn protection meter, full. That means nothing will spawn in, uh, in this chunk or in any of the chunks immediately around it. So if I were to build a mob trap anywhere around here, it wouldn't generate any mobs. So I have to build it far enough away that it's, uh, it's outside of the zone of protection of this meter. And the other thing is that so, okay, fine, I'll build it off somewhere that doesn't have the spawn protection, and then I'll stand around there and wait for mobs to spawn. Well, the longer I stand there, the more protection there's going to be. So I, it's going to have to be something where, like, I'll have to go away a little bit and let mobs spawn in the farm. Or at least I'm hoping that it'll still be within range. That they'll, oh, obviously it mu they must be because these guys come around. So obviously they do still spawn outside the range of the spawn protection. Anyway, so put the uh, mob farm outside of my protected range. And uh, and let the protection drop down to zero, let it generate a bunch of mobs, go in, let them fall down and kill, and, and then kill them and take their stuff and then wander away again to let the protection drop back down again. Now the protection doesn't build up that fast, so if I'm just standing there like for five minutes killing them, I don't think I'm going to generate a whole lot of protection. But still, you know, uh, zero is the best of all. So that's one problem I'm going to run into. The other one is that, you know, the traditional mob farm uses... Uh, source blocks of water to push the mobs around and uh, we won't have the uh, we can't pick up source blocks of water for that we need much more advanced tech than we have so far in this game and we won't get that advanced tech until I find some freaking graphite <clears throat> yes well still haven't found any graphite I haven't actually even found any kaolinite which is not nearly as rare as a graphite but eesh. But I will continue mining underground to see if I can find some. But 
in between my mining. So what I think I'll do is I'll find a spot and start building the mine, the um, mob, mob farm. And see if, even without water, if I can uh, get it to work. Because I have seen, I was watching um, Pancake Survival, uh, the Pancake Challenge map. And now that's that's a pretty special map where there's like nothing underground, so you don't have to worry about mobs spawning underground, and there's like there's no grass or anything for them to spawn on above ground. So if you build yourself a mob farm, it's going to be very very efficient. But still, that worked without water. So I'm hoping that maybe at a reduced rate, I can get something similar to work. You know, well I don't know about the mountains, but maybe over the over in that direction, or possibly over in that direction. So that's what I'm thinking of trying. So, uh, that may actually even be the next thing on my list. So let's see if I've got any time left in this episode. And if I do, then maybe I'll start in on that and do a little bit of time lapse. So, back in a moment. I'm standing here trying to enjoy this fine artwork in my home. But I keep being bothered by this plank that I never got around to fixing. Gotta remember to do that at some point in time. Anyway, I've been thunking upon this whole mob farm thing. Um, oh, and one thing I should point out is I have never made a mob farm in TFC, so I don't even know if it'll work. Um, like, you know, obviously mobs do spawn, but it's also obvious that TFC changes some of the rules. For example, in uh, vanilla Minecraft, squids only spawn th between chunk, uh, between Y... 46 to 40 or to 62 but uh, here in TFC the oceans are much higher up than that so like you know the squids are spawning in oceans that are up around 130 so the spawning mechanics have been modified in TFC quite clearly I mean there's other examples of it too so it's possible they've been modified in such a way that the farm won't work at all but it'll be a voyage of discovery for all of us so I've been thinking about it, and uh, the big question is materials. Now, I'm going to have to pillar up in a few places for the big tube, the big drop tube, as it were. I'll, you know, I guess I could let them drop out in the open, but I have a preference to keep them enclosed so they don't, they don't drift outside the uh, target zone. Um, so the cheapest thing for me to do would be to just take a bunch of this you know, just take a bunch of any of these rock types and uh, gravel, sand. Do I actually have any? Yeah, and build, just build cobblestone out of it. I can pillar up with that. So that's fine. Um, that's pretty cheap and easy to do. At the very bottom, I want something a little bit tougher than cobblestone, just in case a, uh, a creeper explodes. So I should either do that out of uh, one of these smooth, I mean, like solid rock, you know, the smooth slate or sorry, raw, raw rock would be good too, but um, do it out of one of these smooth stones or I could make the brick structures, but the smooth stone is, I think, easier for me to get at. It just costs a bit of uh, wear on my uh, chisel and hammer. So I can do those near the very bottom part of the drop tube uh, where the creeper might explode. And I'm also going to want to build myself a little uh, building around there so that I can be protected from ambient mobs, <laughs> even though I'm going to light it up uh, while I'm waiting for them to drop. So I probably use stone for that as well. Okay, but the uh, but the actual platform itself, which will be way up in the sky, that needs to be made of something that won't fall. So I can't use dirt. I can't use slate. So I could use, again, smooth stone. That's a possibility. The other thing is I could use wooden. I could use plank blocks. These things. But I would need a whole heck of a lot of them. Now I got some willows out here. So I think that's what I do, I'll do. I think I'll at least start. I'll go and lop down all these willows and replant them and convert them all into wood blocks, you know, plank blocks rather, and use that at least f to start off with and see what sort of numbers I'm getting. So I'll do that off camera. Uh, the other thing I need to do is find a good place to do it, and I'm not sure. 
how far away is the ocean over here? Yeah, so the uh, monsters will spawn within, you know, basically seven and a half chunks of where you are. And spawn protection extends out one and a half chunks. Now I want to, oh, the ocean's, or is it just not filling in yet? Yeah, maybe over here. Um, so I want to be able to have a bit of room to move around. Basically what I'm shooting for is I'd like to have the, uh, obviously I want the mob farm outside of my spawn protection area. Oh yeah, I can put it out over the ocean. That could be, that could work. It's got to be outside my spawn protection area, but the other thing is that it would be nice if it was still within spawning range of my home. So when I'm just moving around home and doing farming, stuff like that, it's still possible that they can be spawning there and dropping down and leaving me goodies to go pick up. So that means that I want it to be within seven and a half chunks of me, chunks of my home rather, um, but more than one and a half. So let's say that moving around on the on my homestead there, I give myself one chunk leeway. That means it has to be at least two and a half chunks away. Let's call that three. And it can't be more than six. So between three and six chunks away. That would be, well, let's make it four and six chunks just to give me a little bit more room to move around. So that'd be 64 to 96 blocks away. All right. Oh, I need some water. Do this while I do my calculations. <clears throat> okay, where is home? Home is 112. I am 148. So that's 36 there. Uh, 36 divided by 16. That's just a little over 2. Uh, 11,650. On the Z, I'm a hundred and really hundred and forty-eight away. Wow, that's almost ten. I'm already too far away. Really, wow. So this is basically outside of spawning distance. Who to thunk? That's too bad. I was hoping to put it out over the water. That would have been convenient. Then I wouldn't have had to, you know, light up everything around it, the ground around it. Okay, so I'm going to have to move closer then. How much closer? Uh, let's see. So if it's 96 blocks away, I can go up to 740, 746 in the Z. That's not so hot. So what does that look like? Do, 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 do. Yeah, so that's putting us, this would be the the outer edge of the thing would be out around here. Eh, I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but I can actually see my stuff over there. I don't suppose, do I have ocean any closer? Let's go this other way here. Let's go out this way. Okay, this is a little bit better. Should be a little bit closer. Whoops. 112, 175. That's 63 away. Yeah, that's perfect. And on the Z, what are we? 650, 29 away. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, so I could build it up in here. And the water. And then I don't have to worry about trying to light up at least this chunk of area below. So that means they're more likely. Anything that spawns within this area is, is, is going to... Uh, is more likely to land on my uh, 
in my farm rather than spawn out underneath it. Cool. All right, so I'll have to measure that out more exactly, but that's where we're going to put it is out there. And like I said, I'm going to have to chop myself down a whole bunch of uh, these trees. So I've got a lot of prep work to do. I think what I'll do is this will be probably end up being a little bit shorter episode than I usually have, but since my episodes are usually overly long, that is perhaps a bit of a relief <laughs> for you guys today, right? So I think I'll do a bunch of the prep work, chop these guys down, make up the blocks. Uh, I'll go figure out exactly where I want out there and at least lay out the uh, lay out a causeway out there to get started. And then next episode we can start on actually building the thing. And that'll give me a little bit more time to think about design. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know how I want it to be, but I may, you know, once I see the reality of it all, I may change my mind. Oh, and I guess I also want to build a bunch of ladders too. So, but anyway, thank you for joining me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. And I hope to see you back for the next one. I'm My Knife. Bye. <laughs>